to Healthy Births, Happy Babies, where we share tips, tools, and stories grounded in natural childbirth and parenting principles, so that instead of feeling overwhelmed and confused during this exciting time in your life, you feel safe, supported, and empowered in your childbirth and parenting journey. And now, here's your host, Dr. Jay Warren. Hello and welcome to another episode of Healthy Births, Happy Babies. I am Dr. Jay Warren. I am the Family Wellness Chiropractor and the Wellness Care Coordinator here at the Cap Wellness Center. And today we have a very special guest. His name is Dr. O.G. Russell, and he is an expert in pediatric wellness care and someone that I followed my entire career. So it is a really exciting time uh, for me to be able to have a conversation with him and allow him to share his expertise with you about how to raise a healthy family in a wellness care model rather than a sick care model. But before I introduce Dr. Ogi to you, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsor, the Cap Wellness Center, who makes this podcast possible. The Cap Wellness Center in Encinitas, California, has assembled an incredible team of fully certified holistic healthcare professionals that offer the very best in prenatal and postpartum wellness services. We offer acupuncture, chiropractic, massage, yoga, lactation support services, and a wide variety of birth education classes to ensure that you are fully able to experience the power of birth. And now let me tell you a little bit about our guest today, Dr. Ogi Russell. Dr. Ogi is a pediatric researcher, clinician, international lecturer, and writer. Dr. Ogi has been a staff writer for numerous national magazines and newspapers where he's published over 800 articles on chiropractic and children. We'll be talking today about his book, Kids First, Health with No Interference, How to Raise a Healthy Child Outside of the Medical Model, which has just been re-released. It was Dr. Ogi and Dr. Larry Webster who started the whole pediatric awareness movement on the planet. When it comes to kids' health, he really has no equal. So with no further ado, let's switch over to my conversation with Dr. Ogi Russell. Dr. Ogi, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's a very exciting uh, time right now for me. I have uh, followed your writings throughout my entire career. I've been a chiropractor for 15 years, and uh, you're a very prolific writer, which we heard about in your bio. And all of your information has really helped me in my career, helping the families that I take care of. And I'm excited to have you on the podcast today so that you can share that information with the families and the new moms and new dads that are listening today. So uh, before we jump into our topic, why don't you take some time to kind of introduce you to yourself to our listeners so that, I mean, I know you well, (laughs) but uh, our listeners might not, um, just to give you some background about how you got interested in kids' health what you do, and uh, how you became such an expert in pediatric health. Wow, that's a, that's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me start at the very beginning. I, uh, I've always liked children. I, I love kids. I, my, my, when I was in practice, and I've retired a few years ago, but when I was in practice, uh, it consisted of probably about 85% children, um, and the other, the other 15% was probably pregnancy and so on. So I think I, I can probably safety, safely say I've, I've got a little bit of experience in that, uh, in that realm. Um, but how I got interested in it was actually very strange. Uh, unlike most chiropractors who deal with back pain and, and so on and so forth, um, I started getting into uh, children probably from the first day I graduated. Actually, even before I graduated, when I was still an intern at, the, uh, at uh, CMCC. And that was back, uh, going back to 1974 and 75. So, I mean, it's, it's been a while. Um, I hate to think of myself as an old guy, but I think I am. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, the reason I'm saying all this is because uh, my parents used to run a daycare center for, for kids. And uh, in the town where I, I lived, obviously, in practice. And uh, so I've been surrounded by children since I was one myself. And uh, so it was kind of a natural segue into becoming a pediatric chiropractor. And I remember um, when I was uh, at CMCC uh, in the in the in the outpatient department of the clinic, um, and this was back in '75. Uh, this was a time when chiropractors did not see kids. I mean, there was there was no such thing as pediatrics. There were no courses taught in it. There was nothing going on. Hmm. And I, I remember my practice at that time was probably 90% children, and the school could not figure out 
where these kids are coming to see me because I was, I mean, I wasn't known. Anyway, long story short, uh, when I graduated, uh, the school approached me and asked me to formulate a, a course in, in pediatrics because there really wasn't anything like that. So I was kind of a pioneer in Canada. And it was uh, it was really Larry Webster and I who kind of started the whole pediatric movement in, in North America. Uh, he did that in person in the U.S. and I did that in Canada. And uh, I've you know I've never looked back. It was sort of a natural progression in my life. Uh, it wasn't something that I aspired to. It just it was just something that was a natural uh, thing that just that just happened. It was very normal for me to see kids and I love them so. That's how I got started. <laughs> of course, <laughs> along the way, there's been a, a bunch of degrees and a bunch of letters after my name and a bunch of books I've written and articles and research papers and so on and so forth. So, and that sort of solidified uh, my, uh, my knowledge uh, and expertise and, and whatnot. But I think probably the biggest thing was my love for kids. It's really simple. Yeah. Well, and as you referenced, being such a prolific writer, what I wanted to dive into is your book uh, around kids' health. And uh, it's called Kids First, Health with No Interference, How to Raise a Healthy Child Outside the Medical Model. And what I've found, uh, especially working here at Cap Wellness, we have a very strong prenatal um, wellness program and very prenatal oriented and that mom's coming in or, you know, very excited and concerned really about having a healthy pregnancy and they do mm-hmm. all kinds of things. We're doing chiropractic care and acupuncture and yoga and taking birth classes and there's all this awesome. preparation. Yes, it is. Um, all this preparation is fantastic for their pregnancies so they can be more comfortable and more healthy and really bring these babies into the world uh, more safely, more naturally and uh, more healthy. Mm -hmm. But then afterwards, what I'm finding is that a lot of these parents are now challenged with, okay, I did all of these wellness type of things for myself during pregnancy, and now I have a family. What do I do to continue this on, and what resources do I look for? And uh, so that's what I wanted to jump into. Um, this book obviously came about through your your clinical practice. Did you find parents having the same challenges? Is that how this book came about? Well, I, you know, I'll tell you how the book really started. It, it started uh, because uh, one day um, a publisher walked into my office and asked me uh, to write a book on pediatrics. And so that's how the book started. Uh, and I, I thought, wow, and this is a number of years ago. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, they gave me six months to write this thing. And I, I had no problem finding topics. Because <laughs> I had, I mean, the, the book is littered with, with, um, uh, with uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not references, but uh, te- testimonials yeah. from, from my patients. So, so it's, I mean, it's real. And, and I... Uh, uh, I wrote it in a, at a grade eight level, and of course, um, I wrote it as I speak. So there's a there are a number of uh, different grammatical errors in it, and of <laughs> course, they tried to correct them. Yeah, the publisher, and I said, no, leave it. This is the way it talks. So right. It. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> kind of a novel idea. So they left all the errors of, uh, of just normal speech in the book. So it's uh, it's a, an easy two hour read for most moms. And uh, it, it, you know, it talks about health from a from a perspective of of a profession that doesn't uh, abide by the same uh, health philosophy that medicine does. Yeah, uh, you know, what we do, as you know, is very very different. And uh, it, I've always found it a challenge. I think we all do to try to have people and moms embrace uh, a different concept in, in healthcare. Um, and I was with. I don't want to diverge too much, but but I always I always um, laugh when when medicine generalized medicine tends to compare itself to healthcare because nothing could be further from the truth. It's not healthcare; it's sick care. Right. Uh, chiropractic to me is healthcare because it it uh, it provides your body with a vehicle by which you can maintain uh, optimal health. And so that's how the book started. Right. <laughs> that's a long story, but anyway, yes. that's how I got started. Well, and all too often, you know, even moms that are, you know, taking 
very good care of themselves during the pregnancy, once the baby comes along, their first, if, if something, quote, goes wrong or they're having some sort of, like, sickness, they mm -hmm. bring their kid right to the pediatrician. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying that that's not, um, you know, there's a time and a place for that, but, mm -hmm. you know, moms are seeking more resources. And so mm -hmm. what, are the, what are the main challenges that you found um, in your practice with um, parents that could be really helped by things outside of this medical model? Well, I, I found that um, uh, there are many chiropractors in that profession that don't deal with children and don't, don't have the expertise in doing so. So uh, one suggestion I would have for, for new parents, and I'm not saying new moms, but new parents, would be to find out and get yourself uh, familiar with a pediatric chiropractor in your area. And there are, there are more and more. I mean, you know, 30 years ago, there was, there was hardly any. 20 years ago, there was more. Uh, now, there, there's, there's much, much more than ever before. Uh, so that's one of the advice I would give. Uh, at the same time, also get yourself, uh, if I'm speaking to moms or parents, get yourself familiar with an excellent uh, naturopathic doctor in your area. Uh, that could be uh, your, your office, uh, uh, Jay. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it may be somewhere down the street. And the same would go for someone who is a massage therapist, someone who's a homeopath. And just get yourself, um, uh, um, just allow yourself to create a, a subsidiary army, if you like, that you can then turn to for resources in case anything should happen and you want a different uh, non-medicinal uh, opinion. Right. But it's been, it's been interesting for me working here at the CAP Wellness Center. You know, I've been in practice for 15 years, and my, you know, pediatric practice um, early on was more so like seeing adults, and then the question was, oh, you see kids? And then having that yeah. conversation about how chiropractic is right. absolutely beneficial. What's interesting now is... Now I'm getting the question, oh, you see adults too? <laughs> I love and it. I love it. I mean, every <laughs> single time that question's asked, they're like, oh, you can see my husband too? Because I figure I'm only seeing, like you have to, totally. to walk through my door, you have to either be pregnant or have a baby in your arms. Right. And 90% of my day is that. But right. it's great that Wonderful. that paradigm's changing, uh, at least within the community we're creating here. But um, those resources of finding um, pediatric-oriented chiropractors, we'll put the links uh, in the show notes as well as well as like creating team as you said you know having a health team around mm -hmm. you that's mm -hmm. family oriented mm -hmm. um, and I guess that's kind of my next question is about that that paradigm um, shift in helping parents really realize like how to create health from within and do it in a wellness basis um, what are the well, main yeah, things health only comes from within right yeah, it doesn't come from bottle pills it only comes from within so what, uh, what I suggest all parents do is to really understand uh, what each member of this, this team actually provides with chiropractic being at the center of that because this is an all-encompassing thing. And I, I, think, uh, I think parents need to really clearly understand that our, our, our role uh, is not to really back pain and neck pain. That was, a, that was an insurance reality we, we sort of became lumped or got lumped into back in the 80s. Uh, because uh, insurance realized that we are able to relieve, uh, you know, pain syndromes for people very, very quickly. But our profession never started that way. It was, it was always to make sure that the bodies function the best it can possibly function at. And so uh, I think parents need to understand that concept really clearly. And if they do, then uh, they are miles ahead of the rest of the population. Right. It, and it's incredible to see how quickly kids can heal. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they're not coming in to the world with all of the layers of stress and tension that, uh, you know, with adults, it takes a little while longer. They could, with a couple of simple, gentle little adjustments, these little ones are regaining their health, they're, that spark's coming back to them, and mm -hmm. they're just feeling so much better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do, I agree. And, uh, but, you know, on the, on the other hand, there are also children that require a, a very, very extensive scare, care schedule, which is often much more intensive than an adult would have because of the, the nature of the problem that, uh, that uh, you know, sometimes um, we see. Actually, not sometimes, often we see. Right. Especially, so often, especially uh, with yeah, the toxicity that um, kids are coming into the world with and exposed to. 
Well, it's, it's, yeah, that's true. But also, you know, the, 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 the process of delivery, very often if it's done in a hospital, and even not, uh, it can cause, I mean, it can cause horrendous problems for, for an infant, and it may take them eight months or a year to recover from some of these things. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is something that a lot of parents are just totally oblivious to and don't, don't even understand because it's never, I mean, it's just not talked about. Birth trauma, huge problem. Right. Let's talk more about that. Let's let's um, share your expertise on what you've seen in practice and um, how how it's affecting our children. That well, is the birth trauma, the birth process. Well, I, you know, I, I don't I don't mean to make this thing a frightening experience because it shouldn't be and it's not. But however, uh, there are different procedures that are medically used uh, in birthing centers and uh, hospitals. Uh, that have uh, severe repercussions on a, on a newborn that moms just are totally oblivious to and just don't understand. Uh, one of the probably one of the the, the biggest is is uh, having a baby delivered by C-section, which is so prevalent today. And uh, one of the main reasons for this, um, and I know I'll probably get a whole bunch of hands. Why? What do you mean? Um, <laughs> but uh, one of the reasons is because the baby is born at a preterm predetermined time, see, and we can count on it. It's born at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We can all count on it, and that's the surgical procedure. Now, a lot of moms don't realize that having a baby by C-section is surgery. And so, uh, of course, the, 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 you know, the mom is there. The mo- dad's not allowed. Strange thing. And, of course, uh, the mom is, is draped, so she cannot see what's going on, and she's anesthetized, of course, and she can't feel what's going on. But she doesn't realize that actually a cut is made in the uterus, in the uh, abdominal wall, rather. Now, as soon as that happens, the uterus, the uterine muscles contract to form a protective barrier around the baby. So it's not a matter of reaching into the cut that's made, and to the incision and just gently lifting baby out. No, you have to. You need to f- use forceps to extract the baby from the uterus because the uterus it goes into spasm to protect uh, the baby. That's a natural response. Mom, most moms have no idea that takes place. So, so um, uh, uh, a C-section uses forceps to extract the baby. Uh, sometimes vacuum by forceps are the most common, of course, and that creates a, a myriad of, of, of difficulties. Okay, now the mom is uh, uh, anesthetized; she doesn't feel it, and of course, then she's everything is sewed back up, and, and and there's the baby, and you look at it, and you and you feel, wow, there's yeah, this is just not right. The head is misshapen, and there are many many things that take place that uh, uh, sometimes take years to recover from. Yes, and I, and so many moms really think that you know C-section is easy on the baby because they're no. not passing through the no. birth canal, which really no. is not true. No, it's, it's it's actually the opposite. Now the other thing too, and I always had fun with my with my pregnant moms because I always used to tell them that babies who are born vaginally are usually much more intelligent than than children who are born by C-section. And the reason for that is is that in the, and this is for moms. I'm going to try to make it real simple. But in the in the pelvic opening, there are two protrusions that protrude slightly into the opening of the of the pelvis as the baby descends through the birth canal, and they're called the ischial spines, which really doesn't. So if moms are listening. You don't need to remember these these uh, these terms. But as the baby's head descends through the birth canal. The, these protrusions actually begin to so when the ba- when the head descends it goes down one centimeter and it backs up a centimeter a half a centimeter then it goes down another centimeter backs up another half a centimeter and so that back and forth motion of the head as as it descends through birth canal actually massages the skull and the brain into activity so the kids who are born vaginally vaginally may uh, have much higher uh, IQs and much uh, um, and I'm much more alert when they're actually born in that in that manner. Hmm. Uh, as I, most moms have no idea that takes place. Right, and I know in the cranial sacral world, they any baby that's born uh, cesarean, they want to check that child as soon as possible because oh, the cranial sacral pumping mechanism initiates through that natural process, yeah. and especially yeah. you know if. 
you know, it's not as common, but breech births that are born vaginally, um, which does occasionally happen, um, they definitely want to do that to reset it. And as a chiropractor, you want to make sure the nervous system is booted up, if you will, yep. as properly as possible. That's like a good way of saying it. Yeah. Yeah, and, it's already working. It's just, it just needs to be, you know, <laughs> yeah, it needs to be working normally. Right. And then with the, the pulling and twisting that can happen with the cesarean, or even through a natural vaginal birth, there can be those misalignments at the top of the neck. Uh, Absolutely. That, that's, that's very common. And in most cases, the, uh, just the position of the occiput of the head as it passes through the birth canal usually causes uh, the first subluxation, which is at the very, very top vertebra on the neck called the atlas. And in most cases, the atlas tends to usually subluxate to the right in almost 99% of the cases. And I mean, I can almost count, whenever I see an infant, I can almost count on the fact that if they're, if they're born that way, they will have a subluxation at, at, in the first vertebra. And later on in life, that generally manifests itself as uh, chronic ear infections. So I've, I've, seen, I've seen tons and tons of that. Right. And then doing those adjustments to be able to reset that and allow the nervous system to boot up, if you will, back right. to balance right. allows those kind of maladies to go away. And that's the whole idea. Right. Now, and as far as, um, you know, postpartum wise, like for the moms, that's an, an essential part as well for recovery, either from the surgery or uh, from the vaginal birth as well. Is that something that you're... Um, seeing more so with a, a cesarean birth, or is it pretty much equal as far as recovery from that? Uh, well, a, a C-section um, recovery, is a, obviously, it's a little longer because you know, we're talking about surgery, whereas vaginal recovery is much shorter because there's no surgery involved. Uh, well, I mean, some, some women have an episiotomy um, to enlarge the, the, uh, the opening so there are no tears. But um, uh, generally, a C-section is longer because it is surgery. So not only is the abdomen cut, but the uterus is also cut. So there are two layers, plus all the muscle layers and so on and so forth. So mm -hmm. there is a uh, much longer um, recovery time with C-section. I mean, I think that just makes sense. Right. Vaginal birth, I mean, I, you know, I've, got, I've got moms who are back to work in two weeks if they, if they so choose. We have one, I mean, I remember this one, <laughs> one of our patients, uh, one of my patients in the office, uh, I, I mean, she had probably the easiest birth I, I, I'm aware of. She was in the shower, uh, taking a shower, and she delivered right in the shower. Wow. I mean, the baby, yeah, the baby came, and of course, uh, she had a cell phone right outside, so she jumped out of the shower, <laughs> grabbed the cell phone, called her husband, and he came over, and, and he came over just in time to deliver the placenta, you know. So, I mean, that was, it was like five minutes, literally. Wow. Yes, right. She was just getting cleaned up to, to go to the birthing center, you know. Right. She noticed some contractions, and five minutes later, the baby was in her arms, and uh, there was, and I'm, I think all women would say, oh, my God, let that happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know there's a lot of women listening, like, oh, gosh, I hope it goes that way. Yeah, so anyway, it was, uh, I remember it was, <laughs> we had a celebration in our office. That's the fastest I've ever heard. So, right. Um, and, of course, uh, one of my one of my associate doctors uh, ended up delivering um, a bit, the baby. One of our moms had a baby in the parking lot in the car. Is that right? There it is. You can't even get out of the car. So <laughs> rest up on the parking lot. And so those things happen. Yeah. When baby <laughs> wants to come, baby comes. That's it. Right. And when it's fully baked, you know, that's it. That's the way it works. Right. Okay. So um, in the last few minutes here, like what kind of um, things as far as raising that healthy child, like once the baby comes along, um, are, do you think are like the key factors um, for a parent to implement in really creating a healthy lifestyle for the whole family? I think just probably just awareness um, mm. because health doesn't come from watching TV and, and looking at all the wonderful ads, the, the, all the wonderful drug ads, you know. Um, I think just being aware of what health really is and, and listen to the advice of your team. Really, that's the advice I would give. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, you know, a pediatrician should be part, part of the team, but don't for a moment uh, forget that he is, this is not uh, natural health care. They, they practice something, a profession that's totally, totally different. It's very invasive. And so just be aware that any advice that you get from him, you should check 
with your your other team members, and you may find it conflicting. So then you have to you have a decision to make. What makes more sense? Right, and with on our podcast, we've had a number of guests that are you know massage therapists. Are the we have a naturopath right here in town. Myself, a pediatric chiropractor, um, but then also as this podcast goes more national, we're reaching out to find those people for um, moms. So mm -hmm. we'll have we'll have information in our show notes and also on our website um, that's dedicated to this podcast about uh, how to find some of those resources. But uh, Dr. Ogi, tell um, parents that are listening how they could get in touch with you. And um, I know with your book, it's available on Amazon. Is it also available through your website? Uh, it's, it's, it's available actually through the, um, uh, through the publisher directly. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's probably the best way of getting, and the publisher's, uh, uh, name and so on and address is right on the inside cover. Okay. That's the, the, we don't carry it in, our, in, in my office. Um, I, I just, we don't have any here. Sure. <laughs> I sure. have to order it the same as everybody else does. Right. Okay. Well, I'll make sure that that um, information is linked to so um, yeah. parents can pick it up. And, and if, uh, if somebody wants to write to me, they're very welcome. Uh, Dr. Ogi at practiceevolution.com. Okay. And, and uh, that's uh, you know, very, very simple. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Great. And so with our um, last couple minutes here, I have two last questions for you. One's for the moms listening and one's for the little babies. So the first one is what what would you say for the moms listening or maybe the moms to be listening? What's the one takeaway from our conversation today or something that you really want them to take to heart? What, what would that be? I think probably the one thing I would uh, mention is learn to listen to your own internal voice internal dialogue because it'll never lead you wrong mm. that's probably and I've, I've i've lived by that philosophy all my life i've always listened to my internal dialogue fantastic and and what about for the little babies maybe you know a baby that's still in utero that's listening <laughs> through through mom right now when she's listening to the podcast or maybe a baby that's here like if there's one little piece of wisdom you could whisper into their little ear what would that be well, that's probably the easiest question you've asked me all <laughs> so far. And that would be simply this. I would just say, whisper, and I would just say, you are loved. Mm. Yeah. It. yeah, that's beautiful. Well, Dr. Ogie, thank you so much for being here and sharing your wisdom. It's been a, a real pleasure for me to have you on the podcast. Um, it's been I, my pleasure. Uh, thank you so much. I'll include all of your information there so hopefully um, more parents can reach out to you and just help you spread your message. You've written so many articles and had so much information to share to help people be healthier, and I just want to help you spread that message. Well, thank you very much, Jay. I really appreciate the time that we spent together. All right. Thank you very much. Be well. All right. Take All right. care. Thank you for joining us today. For more information about this episode and other natural childbirth and parenting topics, please visit us at capwellnesscenter.com or message us on our Facebook page with any questions you might have. We here at the Cap Wellness Center look forward to helping you and your family be as happy and healthy as you can be.